every, uh, the, the standard benchmark is every four minutes, four to five minutes, you can add a room. But we try and have our fire stations placed so that we can get to anywhere in the city in four minutes. So he'll direct, in trucks and engines, we have different things, different tasks that we have to accomplish. An engine, they're gonna pull the hose, they're gonna go in and fight the fire and put the fire out with the water. The truck company is gonna throw ladders, do a search, get on the roof and cut a hole to ventilate. Engine, so obviously the hose and the water. Right. Um, <clears throat> but aside from that, the biggest thing is uh, our air packs. Probably the most important thing we have. Okay. Uh, keeps us, uh, keeps our airway protected. Carelessness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. People put food on the stove <clears throat> and they go, they forget about it and they go to the grocery store right. or go down to pick up a video for the night or something and they come back and their house is filled with smoke and their kitchen is burning down. A lot of them are like candles. Candles and, and food and space heater. But it's just people just not paying attention mm -hmm. usually is what happens. The majority of fires start usually is in the kitchen or in the garage. Oh, really? And if it's in the garage, it's what we talked about. That's where people store gasoline, paint, you know, mm -hmm. use pa paints that they're not using, thinners, solvents, and those uh, things just pesticides. Instantly and combust? They, they can if they're spilled. They're combustibles. And then there's flammable liquids, like um, if it's a tanker or a, ga a car catches on fire. Um, so that could be flammable liquid. There's magnesium fires, which you can't put out with water. And then we talked about electrical already, how you have to use dry camera, cut the power off before you can fight the fire. Mm -hmm. Cause no one ever, the, you know, no one ever expects to have, that's gonna happen to them. Right. So a lot of time is like we talked about, it's just having a plan mm -hmm. and just prepare. That's the only thing you can do is just prepare. But if you have a fire in your house, you know, what, what are you gonna do next? You know, what are your steps? Do I have all my kids? Do I have my dogs? Do I have my belongings? You know what I mean? I'll have like that plan can have, hey, I'm gonna grab this, 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 and this if I have time. Um, um, first thing is smoke detectors. Smoke detectors, very important uh, to understand how they function, when they function properly. They will alert you when they're not working properly with a little very annoying chirp when they need their batteries <laughs> changed, things like that. Um, definitely the uh, EDIF, which is the mnemonic for exit drills in the home. Um, you know, always have two ways out of every room if possible. Do that. Crawl, Crawl, be on the ground, get as low as possible. Um, <clears throat> really, that's the only thing, but it's, it's safer. It's still gonna hurt. Right. Smoke does not feel good when it enters your lungs. I'm still coughing this morning, but um, it just get as low as possible and try to get out of the room. And make sure you shut the doors. You know, um, staying low to the ground, staying low out of the toxic gases, and you know what I mean, where all the heat and all the smoke is. Staying low to the ground. And it's 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 an odd thing, but try to find the coolest, most smoke-free area. If you cannot, you know, escape. Like if, if the fire is actually blocking, you know this is the way out. Fire is blocking your exit. Then try to actually find a place where there is no fire. You can put something between you and the fire, a door. Um, and it's it sounds really odd, but even something as simple as a like if you're in a bathroom, let's say for whatever reason it doesn't have a door or something like that, pull the shower curtain closed, get into the shower stall. Those physical barriers will help both with smoking. Um, typically what kids do is they hide mm -hmm. when they're frightened and they like to hide under the beds and they like to hide under you know, covers and under toys and in their safe place because that's their safe place. So that's important for kids to, you know, going back to having a plan is not being scared, you know, just get to your rendezvous point, wherever that is. And, you know, so that's important for kids is to don't run and hide, especially when firemen come in. And for kids, the biggest thing I would have for kids is just know your address. So we okay. get a lot of calls where they're, we have reverse 911 here, right? So you call 911 and in dispatch, they can see your address if uh -huh. it's not a cell phone. So um, 
a lot of times we'll, we just have to deal with that. It's somebody calls it in from a cell phone, it's a general vicinity we get it to. And if it's a kid, sometimes they don't know their address, they give us the wrong address. So that's probably one of the biggest things I'd say. For adults, uh, don't panic because you're the voice of reason for things. I've seen a lot of uh, adults get super panicky. And when you're, you're your kid and your mom or dad is in a panic mode, then you're in panic mode because that, they're, those, they're, they're there for comfort and they're not being that at that time. And there's something when there's a tragedy going on. So that's most important. The exit drills in the home, everybody. Stop, drop, and roll, everybody. The fire extinguisher, that's more of your, you know, I would even say middle school through adulthood, you know, just because it's 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 a little harder concept for, for let's say like a child to grasp, you know, the actual, the, the proper use for, I mean, anybody can be trained to do it, you know what I mean? If, if someone really wants to put in the effort, of course, but that would be what I would say more to focus on for like the, the preteen through adult. story and that's how I got here mm -hmm. and you know I, I played baseball uh, all my life and so our baseball team was on a we we're on a little retreat to Parker Dam you know it's down in Arizona near Havasu and so this is you know I'm just trying to hey man I want to be a fireman one day you know I mean I'm in my 20s I'm just like mm, what am I gonna do with my life you know I'm going to college but <laughs> and so uh, this minivan uh, jammed by me going like a hundred miles an hour well, come to find out, maybe 15, 20 minutes later, this minivan had rolled over. This is a two-lane highway out in the middle of nowhere, um, 100 miles. <clears throat> People were thrown everywhere. People were bloody. And so here we are going to have a good time and going to the lake. And I'm faced with, like, you know, a massacre on my hands. And so none of them could speak any English. And so this one lady grabbed me. And she took me out into the brush and it looked like her grandmother or someone that elder was just face down. I rolled her over and her eyes were open and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I didn't have any medical profession at all. And so that was the worst feeling that I, I think that I've ever had in my life. And that's what caused me to, to be here. So thank you. not being able to help. And then, you know, hey, what do I need to do? So I'm not in that situation anymore where I can't help someone. Yeah. Well, absolutely. yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah there's, I mean, if you don't, you have to, you have to teach people not to leave their pots of food on the stove. You have to teach people how to get out of your house at one o'clock in the morning when the hallway's full of smoke. And if you don't teach them, they're going to panic. And instead of going out the window that's right there on the ground floor, mm -hmm. they're going to go through the hallway into their living room and out the front door because that's how they come in and out of their house all the time. And they go, might go right past the fire and inhale a bunch of smoke and pass out before they get to the front door. So they definitely, people definitely need the education to know what to do. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you so much.